This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. We begin today's show with the political crisis in Spain. The Spanish government has taken control of Catalonia, stripping the northeastern region of its autonomy in efforts to crush Catalonia's independence movement. On Friday evening, Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy announced his cabinet had fired Catalan President Carles Puigdemont and dissolved Catalonia's parliament. Today, I have dissolved the Parliament of Catalonia and have called for elections next December 21st in that region. Yesterday, the Generalitat president had a chance to return to legality and call elections. That is what the great majority of the people in Catalonia were asking for. He did not want to do this. So the government of Spain will take the measures to recover legality. Prime Minister Rajoy's announcement came just after Catalonia's regional parliament voted for independence by a margin of 70 votes to 10. The Spanish Senate in Madrid swiftly responded by granting Rajoy unprecedented powers to impose direct rule on Catalonia under Article 155 of the Constitution, which has never before been invoked. Article 155 enabled Rajoy to fire Puigdemont and take control of Catalonia's civil service, finances, police and media. Puigdemont denounced Rajoy's actions, saying the Spanish leader was removing a democratically elected administration. He called for continued peaceful defiance. The best way to defend the achievements reached to date is the democratic opposition to the application of Article 155. We must do so by preserving ourselves from repression and threats, by doing so without ever abandoning, never at any time, civic and peaceful conduct. Meanwhile, on Sunday, tens of thousands of pro-unity demonstrators waved Spanish, Catalan and European Union flags on the streets of Barcelona. Then this morning, Puigdemont posted a photo on Instagram of a courtyard at the seat of the regional presidency building, along with the words, good morning, in Catalan, and a smiley face emoticon. Today, Spain's central government is expected to accuse him of rebellion for pushing ahead with secession. For more, we go to London, where we're joined by John Carlin, a journalist who has contributed to the Spanish newspaper El País since 1998. That is, until two weeks ago, when he was fired for writing an article in The Times of London headline, Catalan Independence, Arrogance of Madrid Explains This Chaos. John Carlin, welcome to Democracy Now! Um, first, can you respond Pardon. to what took place on uh, Friday? And then how it was you ended up being fired by the newspaper you worked for for more than uh, for about 20 years. Well, let me answer the second part first, because that happened two weeks ago. Um, I don't really want to go into, into many details, um, but um, essentially it's because of articles I wrote on the on this Catalan question, political question that we're um, discussing now. In terms of what happened on Friday, well, it was a momentous day, an action-packed day in, in the history of, of Spain, well, of any country, really, would have been, because on, in the morning, you have the, the elected president of, of Catalonia um, declaring independence unilaterally, and a matter of hours later, the Spanish Senate, with the backing of the Spanish government, um, as you mentioned before, passing into law this, um, or enabling, rather, Article 155 of the Constitution, which allows the Spanish government to dissolve the Catalan Parliament, to fire the man who only hours earlier had declared independence, and to take over uh, direct rule of all the institutions of government in Catalonia. That's where we're at now, and it's a very ugly and depressing and potentially dangerous situation. John Carlin, also, uh, to go back to, to your article and the articles you've written in general on this situation, what you've suggested is that it was uh, Madrid's disproportionate response uh, that's led to what's happening in Catalonia today. Uh, can you explain why you think that's the case? Well, it wasn't just a disproportionate response, which um, viewers may recall from the 1st of October when the police uh, went in with clubs um, to stop people from voting in this sort of symbolic referendum that took place. It's actually been the uh, response of the Spanish government in Madrid over the last seven years, consistently, to the clamour for 
independence from, from around roughly half the, the Catalan population, although it's been growing, growing every year. Um, the fundamental problem is that what the Catalans wanted wasn't, they weren't clamoring for independence being given just like that. They wanted a referendum on independence in the same way there was a referendum in Scotland on independence um, three years ago. They wanted the right to decide. And the Spanish government not only rejected that, they rejected all attempts at dialogue on the matter of giving Catalonia greater autonomous powers, maybe more control over the taxes, the judiciary. Um, and generally, the attitude of Madrid towards the Catalan independence um, supporters has been one that has been dismissive, not to say rude, and, and lacking in respect. And this attitude, together with the refusal to counterdance dialogue, the refusal to counterdance a, a referendum, has increased the pro-independence vote in the last seven years or so from probably around 10, 15 percent to something close to 50 percent. I want to turn back to the Spanish uh, deputy prime minister, Soraya Sáenz de Santa Maria, who is speaking on Friday. The president of the General Etat will no longer be the president when this article is agreed on. He will no longer have the title of president of the General Etat. He will not be able to make valid or obligatory decisions for others, nor for his own government, as a consequence of this secession. He will not be able to carry out his functions. He will stop being paid as the president of the General Etat. John Carlin, can you respond to what she said? Well, look. I mean, unfortunately, um, she has something of a point. I don't like conceding that to the, to the Spanish government, because I think they've acted so badly, um, mismanaged things so badly, to get us to the present ugly situation we're in. But when uh, Carlos Puigdemont, the, the apparently now deposed president of Catalonia, declared independence unilaterally on Friday morning, he knew what he was getting himself in for. It was a red rag to a bull. He knew that this Article 155, um, which would depose him, was going to be enabled very soon thereafter. So, you know, he, he made his choice, and he must take the consequences. Now, there's one very important point, which actually there's some, there's some breaking news here, which um, I don't know if you're aware of, but in the last um, hour or so, the chief prosecutor in Madrid has charged uh, Puigdemont, the president of Catalonia, now apparently deposed, with sedition and rebellion. Huge charges, which, in theory, um, if he were to be proved guilty, could lead to a jail sentence of 30 years. The question now is whether the Spanish government, or the, rather the Spanish judiciary system, will go ahead and call for his arrest and indeed jail him. Should they do that, things could escalate um, rather dramatically and possibly violently in Catalonia. I mean, this is major news. I'm also wondering how the Spanish news is covering um, this uh, call to independence, the vote for independence, all that you're describing. I mean, John Carlin, you yourself uh, were fired from the Spanish newspaper, the leading Spanish paper, El País, after you wrote an article um, on uh, Catalonian independence. Can you talk about the kind of coverage it's getting and what people understand in Spain? Well, look, in Spain, outside Catalonia, um, which is about, you know, 85 percent of national territory, um, there is a very, very strong sentiment against Catalan independence. There's actually a pretty strong prejudice against Catalans generally, which I think is part of the engine of all this um, rather non-compromising um, hard-line action being taken from, from Madrid. As far as the media are concerned, Outside Catalonia, is pretty unanimous. Certainly on public uh, state Spanish television, it's extraordinarily biased in favor of the government, so much so that when there were these images uh, went around the world of police clubbing uh, people during the so-called referendum of 1st of October, very few of those images were shown on Spanish TV. But generally, the newspapers, too, in the rest of Spain, are very much in favor of this imposition of direct rule in Catalonia, the dissolution of the government. Um, the charging of the president, as we've just recently heard. And in Catalonia, uh, you actually get a rather more balanced position. Now, I should say, the, the Catalan state television is also immensely biased in favor of independence. But in the newspapers and in the radio in Catalonia, you, you're more likely to hear 
um, both sides of the argument. Well, John Cullen, could you uh, give us some context on, on uh, why this is happening? I mean, Spain is a relatively decentralized uh, uh, country with 17 autonomous regions mm. and two autonomous cities. So these uh, uh, autonomous regions do have a certain degree of autonomy, but Spain is not a federation. So could you talk about what kind of autonomy these uh, regions enjoy and why Catalonia is different from the others? I mean, you spoke now of of uh, there being prejudice uh, against uh, uh, Catalonia. So could you, could you explain? Yeah. So just before I address that sort of technical question, let me just say that there's um, as a way maybe of explaining a bit to your viewers in the U.S., there is a, there is a clear uh, similarity between that polarity of opinions and perceptions that you get in the U.S., between those who support Trump and those who are against him. There's a similarity between that and in Spain, between those in favor of Catalan independence and against. And also, I think, probably rather as in the United States and here in London regarding the issue of Brexit, an awful lot of families have been divided. A lot of friends have fallen out over these political issues, only perhaps even more intensely and bitterly in Catalonia. In terms of your question, um, yes, the thing about the, um, the, 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 the powers granted to the various autonomous regions, which would be the equivalent of states in the U.S., um, differ quite significantly from state to state. And that's a problem. That was something that was uh, agreed in the 1978 Constitution and barely changed since then. What you have is that Catalonia has actually got quite a lot more autonomous power than most of these um, regions, regional governments, but less than they have in the Basque Country. In the Basque Country, you've got almost, which is in the north of Spain, you have an almost sort of de facto independent state, with the critical thing that, pe that, that the, the government there is allowed to collect taxes and spend the money on taxes, more or less as it wills. In the case of Catalonia, um, there is much less control over how the region uses its money. That's part of it. But it's also, we're talking here about sort of symbolic questions, or more kind of human questions. Um, and just, uh, if you'll bear with me a second, um, there was a, a government statute passed, approved by both the Catalan Parliament and the Spanish Parliament in 2006, which would have granted Catalonia significantly more autonomy and would have entrenched in the Constitution their right to call themselves a nation. Now, in 2010, after pressure from the political party now in power, the Popular Party, the centre-right Popular Party, this statute, agreed by all parliaments, including the National Parliament in Spain, was overthrown by the Constitutional Court. That was, if you're going to find one moment where the um, Catalan independence wave began really to grow and grow and grow, it would be then, at what was perceived as, the, as this completely undemocratic um, action taken against Catalan's desire to increase and, its autonomous powers. And, and from then it's grown and grown and grown, and we are where we're at today. John Carlin, we just have 30 seconds, but again, the breaking news that you just announced, the Spanish prosecutors seeking charges of rebellion and sedition and embezzlement against the ousted Catalan cabinet officials, including Puigdemont. Where do you see this going? Well, um, we'd have to see, first of all, Puigdemont is supposed to present himself voluntarily in a court in Madrid. Will he do so? Um, we don't know. If he doesn't, he will be a fugitive from the law. Um, will he present himself and will he be, well, then he'd be formally charged? Will he then be arrested and will he indeed be jailed? If that happens, all bets are off in Catalonia and things could turn ugly and potentially violent. I want to thank you so much for being with us. John Carlin, journalist, contributing writer at the Spanish newspaper El País since 1998. Well, until two weeks ago, um, when he was fired um, for writing an article in The Times of London headline, Catalan Independence Arrogance of Madrid Explains This Chaos. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we go to Puerto Rico, where Democracy Now! has just returned from, to get response to the governor, saying that they will be um, canceling a $300 million contract with Whitefish Energy, uh, Whitefish named for the Montana town where the Interior Secretary, Ryan Zinke, comes from. This is Democracy Now! We'll also talk about North Korea and the escalating tensions between the U.S. and North Korea. Stay with us.